May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Kuk Audio Podcast. I'm D.C. Pubov, Kuk Audio and Kuk Archives. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship, and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. So today we're going to have the third clip, third audio clip, uh, from a lecture that Shunyu Suzuki gave on July 22nd, 1965, in the evening at Los Altos. He gave a morning and an evening talk, frequently going back, usually going, yeah, maybe always, our almost always, going back to the San Francisco from Los Altos. 30-minute mm, drive? Something like that. 35 minutes from uh, the the um, Sokoji Temple on Bush Street uh, to the Marion Derby's home in Los Altos. Um, so... Um, uh, First, I'll read the clip, and then I'll play the audio for it. This is the third paragraph. If you go to the um, verbatim transcript on shunyusuzuki.com, you can get it by, uh, if you want to follow it reading, you know. Just go to shunyusuzuki.com, the lecture search form, and then just write in the uh, keywords uh, 65- 07-22, that's July 22nd, 1965, and it'll come up. Uh, so I'm going to read the third paragraph, and I'm going to go into the fourth paragraph a little and stop there. All right. When we sit, we call it inmost nature, uh, in itself, our activity. We call it the self-use of inmost nature. Let it work. You don't do anything, but let our true nature work by itself. This is Zen practice. Of course, even though you do not do anything, you will have pain in your legs or some difficulty to keep your mind calm. And sometimes you may think, oh, my Zazen is not so good. <laughs> that is also the activity of the inmost nature. Not your activity, but the activity of your true nature. Your true nature says, your zazen is not so good. <laughs> if he says so, you should accept it. Oh, not so good. What are you thinking? Stop thinking, okay? Uh, this is in, you know. Uh, when you do something... There's a kind of morality in it because you do it by choice. But when you make a decision to do something, your inmost nature will tell you, well, that won't be so good. Uh, why don't you do it this way? Uh, this is precepts, you know. When we have some choice in our activity, in Zazen we have no choice. We just sit. And whatever the inmost nature says, let it do it. I don't mind. Uh, that's Zazen. But when you have, uh, when you make some plan, or you're responsible for it too. And at that time, you should listen to what your inmost nature will say. That is morality or precepts. Our inmost nature will tell you what to do. So if you understand this way, this is morality or this is precepts. So the precepts actually are not just two or 250 or 500. For females, we have 500 precepts and for males, 250. Now, it's not fair, but anyway, 500 or 300, it doesn't matter. Whatever we do is precepts because we have some choice. We have to make some decision. I am responsible for it. What should I do? And when we make some decision, we listen to Buddha nature. What should I do? That's all. 
Uh, when uh, Suzuki referred to, uh, you know, 250 precepts for men, 500 for women, uh, he's talking about the original Buddhism. Uh, and, and he says, you know, we have or something like that. That's uh, not something that was honored by Mahayana Buddhism. Uh, well, maybe some Mahayana did. I don't think so. I think that was one of the points was, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to stick to everything. And also, the Buddha, in, you know, in one of the Mahayana <laughs> texts, it said Buddha's, when he's dying, he says, oh, there's too many precepts. Um, you know, just go back to the basic ones. But he didn't uh, elaborate which ones. So when uh, all the arhats got together to decide uh, what to do, they thought, well, we'd better keep them all. Now, I don't know if, I don't know what the source is for that. But, I've, you know, I've heard it or read it, you know, multiple times. So I think, I assume it's Mahayana because they, uh, they're pretty attached, it seems to me, to the precepts. Um, <laughs> and, you know, some of them are, you know, they're sort of outdated and stuff. Um, and, uh, but uh, also the women wasn't 500. It was like, men was like two, around 250 and women was more like around 350. I, I just tried to find it. But I did a quick look. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't see it. Um, now, when he's talking about uh, listening to our inmost nature, um, uh, that's tricky. Um, uh, of course, he's leaving it up to our judgment to know what's our inmost nature and what's, uh, uh, what's. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, what's uh, just, I mean, he could say, well, everything is an expression of your inmost nature, but you might have thoughts like, all right, I had a friend uh, who went and had a psychotic break, right? And he thought Jesus was telling him to go put his hand on women's butts in public. So he did that, and he found how interesting it was that, they didn't seem to complain because he'd pick very large women and, you know, he was obsessed with their butts. So he'd go up and just put his hand on, you know, like in Safeway in a department store. And then one day he followed a woman into the dressing room and he got in trouble and got arrested. And, and the thing was, he was in court saying, ah, somebody at the door. He was in court saying, um, uh, explaining how Jesus had told him to do this, when all of a sudden he snapped out of it. He said he just woke up out of the whole thing and was filled with the most enormous uh, hum embarrassment and sense of humiliation. It was like that whole persona was gone. And so he became a California registered sex offender and you know, just embarrassed to death and left the state. He's doing fine now. I've been in touch with him recently. Yeah, we all have our <laughs> weird moments, huh? So anyway, one has to... Uh, well, one one uh, guru I know that's in a totally different um, mm, system uh, on this sort of thing, you know, says to follow your excitement. You, or follow your inner voice telling you what to do, or your feeling. It's not. It doesn't have. It's not a voice necessarily. It's not. You're listening to your thinking, going blah blah blah. Your, your, your feeling. You know what you're attracted to. Um, what what you have a good feeling about. Um, and this, you know, I have a, a good feeling about uh, uh, maybe. Um, uh, having sex with a woman I just met, but I don't do it because I have some judgment and I know my wife wouldn't approve. But, you know, some men, I know myself included, have thoughts like that, have urges and things. So is this my inmost nature telling me to be promiscuous? 
No, I know it's not. So what that that um, that other guru said uh, was um, you you have to follow your your you know your inner voice or your your inner feelings with integrity. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a minefield there and it's tricky and uh, one should be cautious. Uh, this is the sort of thing that could be taken advantage of. And, um, you know, in, in, uh, in the history of Buddhism, there's no worse example of twisting uh, Dharma to serve uh, evil purposes than uh, Japanese uh, uh, imperial Buddhism and militarism in the first half of the uh, 20th century. Uh, yeah, I mean... So, you know, you really got to be careful. Uh, I, I wonder, you know, don't think of everything you hear Jun Suzuki saying as absolute dharma, you know? You, you, we're responsible for processing what we hear. And then, like he says, uh, you know, uh, spoken teaching is just hints. Uh, he's just doing his best. He's coming up, you know, he has a sense of what his inner voice is. Right, so he's he's saying, "Boy, this is sure work for me." Um, that's all you have to do. But um, uh, you know, we just have to exercise judgment and be responsible. And he does talk about we have to be responsible there. Um, anyway, you see where I'm coming from, and uh, I don't think it will help for me to elaborate more on that. So. Um, uh, Let's hear what he has to say in his own words now, in his own voice. Edited, I didn't have to edit this much at all. Uh, you know, took out a few coughs, a few extra spaces, a bunch of clicks. I think there's something wrong with the machine making uh, this, uh, Marion's reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape recorder. Very high-quality recordings. Oh, God. Boy, the ones they were doing, they did some high-quality ones at Zen Center, too, around this time, 65, they started. I think they got the idea from Marion. and started. She sort of broke the ice. The idea was, oh, no, we can't record him. It's for the moment and stuff like that. And Marion was strong and, you know, asked him, can I record you? I want to, you know, and he said, yeah. Uh, and... Uh, so they start doing it in the city. Oh, it's okay. We can record him. Uh, that's the way I see it. Uh, now, I do know one person in the city said, no, we all started at the same time. But uh, I, I think they just want to take credit. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, after they started using the reel-to-reels, they got into these cheap recorders and had people that really weren't good uh, audio engineers <laughs> with cheap recorders, and there's just a lot of really bad quality recordings. I mean, that 66, 67, oh, God, and we lost so much there. Um, anyway, don't worry about it. Just enough survives. All right, come on, let's listen to Suzuki. What does he have to say? When we sit, we call it. He must let in past nature. In its uh, self uh, activity. This is uh, we call self use of in must nature. Let it work. <laughs> you don't do anything, but let our true nature work by itself. This is Zen practice. Of course, uh, even though you do not do anything, you will have pain on your legs or some uh, difficulty to keep your mind calm. And sometimes you, you may think, Oh, my Zazen is not so good. <laughs> <laughs> and that is also the uh, activity of the inmost nature. 
you know, not your activity, but the activity of your true nature. Your true nature says, you are not so good. <laughs> if he says so, you, you should accept it. Oh, not so good. <laughs> what are you thinking? Stop thinking. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is Zen. No. When you do something, you know, uh, it is a kind of morality. It is in it. It is because you do something by your choice, you know. But when you make decision to do something, your inmost nature will tell you that will not be <laughs> uh, so good. How, why don't you do it this way? That is precepts, you know. When we have some choice in our activity, in Zazen we have no choice. We just sit. <laughs> and whatever uh, in most nature say, uh, let it do it. I don't mind. Z this is Zazen. But when you have some, you make some plan, you are responsible for it too. And at that time, you should listen to what your inmost nature will say. That is morality or precepts. Our, our inmost nature will tell you what to do. So if you understand this way, uh, this is morality or this is precepts. So uh, the precepts actually is not only two or 250 or 500. Mm -hmm. For uh, female, we have 500 precepts. And for male, 250. <laughs> that is not so fair. But <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, 500 or 300, it doesn't matter. Whatever we do is precepts, because we have some choice. We have to make some decision. I am responsible for it, what I should do. And when we make some decision, we listen to Buddha nature. What should I do? That's all. This has been a Kuk Audio podcast. I'm D.C. Puba of Kuk Audio and Kuk Archives, coming to you from Sleepy Senor with Doggy Bandita, Feline Cuchita, and dear lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening.